Good evening and thanks for staying up late with us everyone. I'm Sarah Carlson. Ballots are set for tomorrow's spring election. We start by taking a close look at spending in the state Supreme Court race. The first year of a publicly financed state Supreme Court race isn't leading to any drop off in ads. It turns out special interest groups have found their way around the new law. News 3 political reporter Jessica Arp explains in our campaign 2011 coverage. A mother tells DA David Prosser her two young sons were sexually assaulted. Joanne Kloppenberg says she has courtroom experience, but Kloppenberg's never been a judge. With all the attack ads airing across the state, you'd never know this is the first Supreme Court race where both candidates are running solely on taxpayer dollars. I don't think it's working out quite as they hoped. The idea is that you would free the candidates from the need to raise any money at all. Uh, the problem is that the amounts that candidates are given, it's about $300,000, isn't nearly enough to run uh, a high visibility campaign. UW political scientist Ken Mayer says attack ads by interest groups are filling the vacuum of spending, but part of the law giving candidates the option for public financing tried to account for that, giving candidates extra funds when money was being on attack ads against them to fight back. The problem is there's still a loophole. It's been interesting as far as playing out the type of ads that we've seen in that it has not um, regulated ads that are considered to be issue ads and so that those types of ads are still not regulated and those funds are not reported to our office. The Government Accountability Board explains if an ad doesn't say vote for or vote against, it doesn't count as express advocacy, the type of ads that trigger the extra funding. Instead, groups run issue ads with language like this. Tell Kloppenberg to fight crime, not our farmers and employers. And that's a safe harbor. As long as you do that, then that's, the, that that's what the ad is telling people to do. It, it's not considered a campaign ad. On top of that, interest groups like Right to Life Wisconsin have legally challenged supplemental funds laws and measures by the Government Accountability Board to regulate issue ads. Free speech is what is at issue here, not whether people can get around laws. We're talking about violations of the First Amendment and whether or not in any context groups such as ours have the ability to freely express our views in the public arena. Is the law actually doing anything to clean up Supreme Court elections? We're still better off, I think, uh, with uh, judicial candidates, uh, especially Supreme Court justices, not having to raise money. And the, the idea is that the independent spending is going to have less of an influence and poses less of a potential for corruption than actually taking money. In Madison, Jessica Arp, WISC News 3. Now, a federal judge upheld the public financing supplemental funds in a court decision last week, but it was immediately appealed by Wisconsin Right to Life. The U.S. Supreme Court, by the way, is considering a similar case out of Arizona.